Thank you, HDO, for inviting me here. I'm really impressed with the office. Uh, hopefully, all of these days, we do from big boys uh, move to. Uh, well, actually, I work at a perhaps the most interesting or healthy, healthiest uh, species, Freedom Park. Uh, not only the biggest designer, but we're asked to manage it for establish it as a Art space. So my offices are within the greenest possible space in Lagos. Alright, so um, as soon as you're all doing has big ideas about projects, you, you, you didn't think you never realize, well you realize you probably wouldn't get bills, but uh very rare occasion that you actually get all those dream projects and as you see through to reality. So the Spirit of Freedom Park is just like that. And um, it teaches many lessons. Um, I think the biggest of which is patience. Uh, so let's start next slide. Next slide please. All right, welcome to Freedom Park. It's dedicated to heroes, past, present, and future. Uh, next few slides are on what the park is. Uh, that's a food court building. Next. All right, I'll talk a bit about the CIA. In 1998, or 1999, uh, Papu Konu and architects invited several firms, I mean, uh, about 20 firms, to join this collaborative, uh, the CIA, Creative Intelligence Agency. And the whole idea was to begin discussion on the issues around Lagos. I mean, uh, and the millennium was in two years' time, I mean, 2000. And everybody around the world was talking about millennium. Uh, there's a millennium dome, millennium past, and various projects all over the world. And I created this platform where we as architects would gather and contribute our own, our own um, grievance into the discussion. I mean, as far as Lagos, the Lagos dialogue. And so, um, there's a particular project where we said, okay, let's get out there, let's bring students into this, into this mix and get students involved in the whole idea of design and design thinking, design approach. And uh, hopefully we can put together a presentation we will send to the government and that's where that will go. Next slide, please. So this is um, my class, my team. Um, I had um, six students from the University of Lagos and I think uh, Yabat College of Technology. Not only did it be, okay, my proposal, I mean, I thought Lagos was becoming too congested and Lagos needed its own breathing space near the park. Lagos Island then had this issue of area boys. Um, it was just from school, it was just to swallow. So I thought Lagos needed some breathing space, our central park, or high park. And the only available space then was the old Broad Street prisons. It was one hectare of space in the center of um, Lagos Island and had been abandoned for several years. So that was my presentation, my, my pitch. So the students who decided to join me um, went along. In the process, we actually did the master model for the whole of. Um, the marina area on Lagos Island. And that's the site for Freedom Park right there. Um, okay, so this is you know, big, big time architects. I mean, imagine I think it will be one of these students working with another team. Alright, next slide please. Alright, so my story in the process of um, creating Freedom Park, we had um, we looked into the old prison. And they said we went back into the history of Lagos and how Lagos became a colony in 1861. And uh, when the British established the colony, one of the first things they did was to build a prison next to the governor's office. And uh, this actually, 11 years after the, um, the first the, the, the OBA to sign the treaty of for Lagos, uh, they established the prison. Uh, this is the if you go to City Hall and King's College, um, 
those uh, the city, city hall is here, and uh, all the king's collection is now here. That used to be House of Barracks. The House of Barracks were the historic constabulary that were used to establish um, authority or order in, in the city. And also, this is a 1885 map, the first uh, proper map of Lagos, which is only 1885 by A.W.T.G. Lawson, native of West Africa. <laughs> so we've had this for a long time. <laughs> All right, next slide, please. All right, so in the course of research on the prison, we realized that the prison had first been built in 1872 when they used mud balls um, and fat roofs. But the natives um, kept throwing the fire into the setting that place uh, in Potter. So in 1885, the British imported bricks um, from London at the cost of 16,000 pounds. In the same year, they spent 700 pounds for education in the colony. So um, they established this fireproof, I mean, special, this is modern technology in this case, the fireproof uh, prison. Uh, okay, so. This actually speech was actually taken in the seventies when when he pulled up and thankfully um Madame Ron Richards had the foresight to try to preserve those um, preserve the history. Um, next slide. Okay, so this is the loss and we realized during the course of um um the research that first of all the prison was built in 1872. Finally, it was done in 1972, so that's 100 years. So, what happened in those 100 years? It's a whole lot of history. Um, by 1972, the site and the prison had been shut down. The developers had been invited, four different developers had been invited, and the site was uh, broken into four lots. And they demolished the entire prison um, and moved the site. Next slide. Um, also part of our research was that you know, you back, yeah, when we did most, most research, we realized that several famous Nigerians had been incarcerated there, one of which is Awolo, Kamal Makoli, Pai Molu, and lots of other stories, Latin Japanese. So this was a prison in 1990, 1998, when we went to visit, 1999, sorry, uh, when we looked at this. All the buildings beyond have been pulled down. This is just a small fence which was preserved as a uh, as folly for the site, for the for the developers behind. Next um, slide, please. So this is 1999, like I said. The developers had this site after years of frustration because um, in 1972, when they, when they awarded the um, allotments, they had to realize that there would be a series of coups, succession of coups, so from, right through from 70, I think the 73 or 75, they said coup after coup. So all the developers, all the developers lost their investments, and their, um, you can see a lot of the um, equipment was abandoned. Next slide. You can see all cranes. So I went to I went to this site with my students, and luckily we got to find we got to meet this guy, Mr. John O'Clary, who began to tell us a bit more about the story around the old prison. He had been a warder for a brief period during the, the last few days of the prison, and immediately we felt that this space had the natural elements of, of a park, the trees. Um, I think it just had been abandoned for many years. But then um, there was history, there's still um, some relics from the old, old prison uh, there, which we felt we could work, uh, work around. Next slide. We were fortunate, next slide. We were fortunate to come across the old plans uh, that showed the layout of the old prison. and. Um, the actual um, uh, legend of everything. And we thought this, and everything had been demolished. And immediately the idea was how do we create a park? And that's not just a park, but a memorial to what was here before. This gave us an opportunity to at least, I felt, we're still looking at the 
like a, an embossed thing, embossed button. I thought, how do you emboss this on the site? So you have like what was there before without revealing everything. So next slide. Okay, um, again, um, so the rationale for the increase for the, for the development was two, two, two fold. One was to create a green space in the heart of Lagos. That's, Lagos has become congested near green space. And the other was emotional, and it, it was this prison that had been around for 100 years. How do you uh, tell the story? How do you, um, how do you celebrate that people's forefathers who were incarcerated? Yeah, yeah stories like Yeah, the references like the Elmina Castle in Ghana, which, were, which was preserved, but it still is a, uh, a moment in history that it refers to. Next slide, please. So, that's creating um, the green space in uh, a park, develop the social interaction space, encourage and promote the arts, um, education through history, create employment, encourage healthy living, um, this great green space, generate revenue. This is my rationale to Lagos State. This is what we're pushing to Lagos State as the core values of the project. Next slide. So basically, we put all together, put together all the designs, 20 grams, 20 ideas, which is the governor at the time. This was um, Ashura Ju Kalatu, who I don't know, maybe talked to his desk somewhere. And that was the last we heard about that proposal. Until 2009, when I happened to meet somebody who, fortunately, was a special advisor to Pashula, to Pashula at the time. And I mentioned the, this project had done 10 years in the past, so 10 years, 10 years back, just in passing. And she said, well, that's a great idea. Just have this synopsis. I mean, just have the, just have the, uh, the um, um, drawings or anything on the project. And luckily, we kept the full model. I mean, which is somewhere under the gallery door somewhere. And some of the drawings were still there, but we were invited. I sent this synopsis to the governor, and he asked how soon I could meet for a presentation. So, plus that everything up, his fresh drawings, 10 years, technology, next slide, please. So, came up with an idea, I mean, a presentation of the new Freedom Park, which essentially celebrated all the key elements, for instance, where the records office in the museum was, where the records office in the old prison was, we placed the uh, museum, the uh, prison museum, the old prison kitchen became where we placed the, the food court. Uh, various um, cell blocks were extended in different ways. The old gallows, we placed our main stage. So today we tell all the artists going on the stage that, look, your presentation has been, you have been your game or your career died. Literally, <laughs> literally there. So basically, this is the concept. Next slide. Now you can see the transition from um, this is how we how we started off. We had to clean, clean up the site and um, retain some of the trees that were not in the line of our uh, projects, and then gradually evolve the space. Uh, I forgot to mention that, that um, after my presentation with the uh, governor Pashula. The only question he asked me was, how soon can you meet with the executive council? So I met with exactly, the executive council another month, and the project was approved. Uh, that was a miracle. I mean, like I said, when your dream project comes true. Uh, next slide. So this is Freedom Park today, uh, so like 2010. No, I don't know why. But, no, this is 2010 was earlier. This is about two, three years ago, now all the trees are fuller, you can hardly see, see anything underneath the foliage. But we have an art gallery here now, which is not part of the original plan, but this is dedicated to Professor Oli Shrinka, Nobel laureate, who in the course of the project had donated some artwork to Lagos, and uh, the governor felt his, um, we should dedicate a building in the park to him. So this is the old gallows, the main stage. The records of this museum, we have an amphitheater, 
which is where the female cells used to be, so we have a, a softer area. The elbow is here, black and the axis between the old ministry, the ministry of justice and the gallows. So I, that, I call that the axis of justice. So the elbow is sort of like max, max that axis. Next slide. Um, if you collect the original map we got from the um, the old map of the prison, you see the relationship with all the old buildings, where they were, and how we've established core areas. The only area that's out of brief session was this area, because we wanted to soften the south side of the park. I wanted to use the water features, um, and the amphitheaters where the female cells used to be. Right, next slide. Uh, the vernacular was colonial. I thought it was important to maintain the uh, colonial vernacular and an almost prison-like uh, style. So, uh, to use the, the towers, watch towers. Next slide. Uh, that's the art gallery that's dedicated to it. Uh, this is totally because it was not part of the original brief. I felt um, at liberty. To, to change the style. And um, I was talking about those that fitted in because it sat on the, the footprints of another one of the cells. Uh, so, Oshirika has a special cell and uh, he enjoys it very much. Alright, uh, next slide. So, this is the museum. And it was important to have a daytime and nighttime um, because. Okay, like, let me go back. Um, Freedom Park was founded on three cardinal uh, tripods or uh, foundations. One, the green space. Second, the historical monument. And third, an art space. The art space, the art was the sustaining element. We have to bring the artists to adopt the space. So that, um, that will generate traffic, that will keep people coming back. The museum, you will go once in a lifetime, and because you go there, you've seen that, you've done that. But the artists and the content created a, a returning, a returning um, factor. So that's the uh, museum at night, and that's the art gallery at night. So much great space that had both the daytime feel and the nighttime feel. Next slide. Alright, that's the amphitheater. Uh, it's not quite a little bit of a tourist attraction as well. A lot of people come to visit our number one inmate. Uh, and in the course of a period, um, many, uh, we, we invited lots of groups. And we, we have groups like about 14 festivals in a year. Uh, for film festivals, this is like documentary, international documentary film festival. Uh, we have the Cora La Bac, Lagos Festival, Lagos Theatre Festival, uh, Eco Theatre Festival, collaboration. So lots of festivals over there. So it's 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 actually leaving its um, its function. I mean, what it was designed for is coming. It's leaving up the concept. Uh, next slide. Uh, we have those school tours with kids coming. Now this is the core center around which we um, this is our main the heart of the of the park where the founding fathers uh, Zik uh, Awolo uh, Matubelo and um, Zik uh, used them and this is the Hall of Fame. Next slide, please. Like I said, we have cultural festivals and film. And that's theater. Next slide. Uh, this is the amphitheater. Next slide. The food court, the stage of the food court. The food court is the daily um, activity center of the park. Occasionally, we use the main stage for larger, uh, larger events and festivals. Next slide. That's the main stage. Next slide. We also created lots of different um, brands. We celebrate heroes, like I said. Play for Tyro in Dollar. 
well, various festivals that go. And this is all the events that I held over time. Next slide. Uh, this is uh, the park, the version of the green space in the heart of uh, the congested legal Island. And this is a very happy crop of artists enjoying this. <laughs> Alright, next slide. Uh, 2015, we got of excellence from Trigger Advisor. Thank you very much.